So as we grow in our faith, we gain the knowledge and wisdom we acquire to live in the ways of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we turn to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 5? made 
On our side, it's to receive His promises. And He tells us, make every effort to respond to God's promises. And how do we respond to His, his promises? <coughs> he says, supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. The knowledge that He's speaking to us about is getting to know His word, acquainting ourselves with His word. And verse 6 says, And knowledge with self-control. So making his desires our desires. Amen? Amen. And self-control with patient endurance. Endurance speaking about waiting upon his promises. Giving and trusting that everything will be taken care of. Amen? Amen. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. So brotherly affection is speaking of sowing into the lives of our brothers, sowing into the kingdom of God so that God's word can be preached. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to 2 Timothy. Give us a cheerful heart, O oh Father God, that we may be able to sow in your kingdom. 
make us meet, O oh Lord God, to be partakers of your divine nature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, and it is in Jesus that we have crossed over from death to life, from sickness to health, from poverty, O oh Lord God, to abundance. We thank you, Lord, and it is in Christ Jesus that all the promises of God have their yea and their amen. Thank you this morning, O oh God, if we can look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you this morning that Jesus Christ is our high priest, the one, O oh Lord God, who is risen from the dead, and Lord God, seated at your right hand, making intercession for us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are our Lord, you are Savior. You are our healer, our redeemer, our deliverer, our restorer. You are our life. You have saved us from so much. So we look to you this morning, Jesus. We thank you that we receive comfort from you. We receive strength from you. We receive divine help from you. Thank you this morning that we are not alone, but that you give us divine assistance. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, for every person that is gathered in this place, for every person, Lord, that is under the influence of this broadcast. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, and as the word of God will come, that Father will have a clearer understanding of your word and of your will. For your will is revealed to us, O oh God, in your word. Thank you that faith will come. I thank you this morning, Lord, that you will unleash opportunities where there was no opportunities. Oh Lord, where there was no way to make a way. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for those who are weak, that they will receive strength this morning. In the name of Jesus. Those, oh Lord, who have lost hope, that, are, oh Lord, find themselves in despair, they will find hope this morning, oh God. I thank you for the birthing forth of new dreams, new vision, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you renew our youth as the eagles, O oh God. So we thank you this morning for renewed hope. O oh Father, renewed lives this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, O oh God, we give you thanks and we give you praise and glory and honor, O oh God. Lord, I yield myself to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, speak to us this morning. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. That our eyes will be opened. And we will be enlightened this morning with the word of God. In Jesus' blessed name, O God. Thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the holy angels, O God, your word declares that the angels of the Lord encamp about the righteous. So we thank you, O God, that we are not alone. You are not forsaken in this world. But you are with us, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So we thank you this morning. Times of refreshing shall come. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. All the people of God say, Amen, Amen, Amen.
God doesn't work according to time. And that's one of the lies and deceptions that the enemy uses is to get us to thinking that it is too late. But understand that God does not work with time. And even so, the manifestation and coming to pass of our dreams and all that God has promised us is not based on time. It is all based on God. Now, this morning I want to share with you on the subject of faith overcomes all fear. Faith overcomes all fear. I said something last week. I quoted from the book of Romans. The Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin. The Bible is very clear on the subject that the just shall live by faith. So we have been justified according to Romans 8. We've been justified. And because we've been justified, we are the just. And because we are the just, we live our lives by faith, not by what we see or hear or feel, but purely by faith. And faith, we understand, comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So we live by faith. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and verse 19, we find Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. And he presents to them, he says, I sit before you, he says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day. That I sit before you, it is said before you, I sit before you, life and death. The blessing and the curse. Then he says something, he says, you choose. So you have a choice, either you're going to you're going to choose life or you're going to choose death because the opposite of life is death or you're either going to choose the blessing or you're going to choose the curse but at the end of the day the choice is left up to you I cannot make that decision for you your neighbor cannot make it for you. Your parents cannot make that decision for you. It's a decision you've got to make on your own. What are you going to choose? The Bible says the power of life and death lies in the tongue. They that love it will eat the food thereof. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Bible says protect your heart, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flow the issues of life. So everything that happens in your life is as a result of what is in your heart. And so you'll find if your heart is full of fear, everything around you in your life is fear. You're afraid to step out in faith. You're afraid to do things because you're afraid of what will happen. Now in the book of Isaiah 41, that's the foundation of my, of my message and verse number 10. I want you to read that with me at the top of your voice. Isaiah 41 verse 10. One, two, let's go. like I only hear two or three people. I don't know if you're there. Isaiah 41 verse 10. One, two, let's go. I love that. I love that. Hallelujah. 
Who's speaking? Who's speaking here? Who's he speaking to? I want someone to say he's speaking to me. Because you can say us, but not everybody is receiving this thing. Who's he speaking to? Hallelujah. He says, fear not. Do not be afraid. You know, throughout the scriptures, you hear the echo of those words. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about nothing. Don't stress about anything. You know what? We go to doctors these days and they diagnose us with stress. But a Christian, you're too blessed to be stressed. Come on, somebody. When the doctor tells you you're stressed, say, hey, doctor, you better check again. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I don't have stress. Hallelujah. I'm not stressed. I'm not oppressed. I'm not depressed. I'm a bad praise God. Hallelujah. God says, fear not, for I am with you. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Don't worry about what's going to happen this month. I'm with you. Don't worry about what's going to happen at the office tomorrow. I'm with you. Don't worry. God is telling you, don't worry. Do not be afraid. But pastor, you don't know what's happening. Listen, the word of God says, all things work together for good. It doesn't matter what's happening. It's working together for my good. It's for my good. Hallelujah. God says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For I am your God. Those who hope in the Lord, come and talk to me. Those who put a trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. You'll never put you to shame. Hallelujah. You've got too much grace for you to be disgraced. Some will catch you tomorrow. Hallelujah. He says, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. You see, God, your strength is going to come from God. It's not going to come from any other source. It's going to come from God. He says, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. In other words, you can be guaranteed that God is going to help you. He says, I'll strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. God will uphold you. God will hold you up. When you think you're going down, God says, I will uphold you. God will make sure that you do not go down, that you do not go under. The enemy may think that he's done the work for you to be buried, but God says, I will uphold you. With my righteous right hand, with the, come and talk to me, the right hand of my righteousness. You know, in, I read an article in the Time magazine, and the, the title of that story was Blind Faith. And it's about a gentleman, an American gentleman by the name of Eric was a mountain climber and this guy climbed the Himalayan mountains in the year 2000 and he was like almost 350 meters on the top still climbing the mountain in the Himalayas and something happened and he tripped and he fell. And when he fell, he was severely injured and he had to be airlifted. And he developed um, what they call pulmonary edema, which is the inflammation of the lungs. And then he contracted pneumonia in the hospital. Then he was discharged. And about 11 months later, in the year 2001, he received a phone call from a group of individuals who were wanting to climb Mount Everest. 
And this guy, you know, he was in second thought. He was in two minds about this thing. Because number one, he had just been in a major accident where he fallen off a mountain. And it's not just a mountain like we see the Drakensberg or, or a hill. I mean, this is the Himalayan mountain. He fell over 300 meters. And secondly, he was still recovering. But because of his expertise and his knowledge in terms of climbing, they asked him to, to come on board and assist him. And he prayed about it and all the while, you know, through this whole thing, as he prayed, then he eventually accepted the offer, the invitation. And he was one of those who led this team. It was a team of about 26 people climbing Mount Everest. And as they climbed, this guy was just sharing how he prayed fervently. He continued to pray. He said he prayed like he never prayed before. He kept on praying, pressing into God, strengthening himself in God. So I'm reminded of that when I read here, God says, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. This guy had nothing else to depend on except God. He could not depend on steroids to give him strength or energy boosters or drinks, but it was God who was his strength. And so much so, they reached the peak of Mount Everest. They successfully climbed that mountain and they broke a record. They made a record, a world record. That was the largest American group to climb Mount Everest. It was also the first time in history that amongst those in the group was a blind man. A blind man climbed Mount Everest. And also in that group was the first ever father and son team who climbed that mountain. But here's the thing, had this guy submitted to all the odds that were against him, he would never ever have received that recognition that he received in the end. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. When we go to the book of Proverbs 24 verse 16, the Bible tells us the righteous may fall seven times, but still get up. You may fall seven times, but still get up. I don't care how many times you've fallen. My message to you this morning is get up and recover. Get up. Today is your day to get up. Sister Alicia sheds you know, in a message about Isaac, when he dug the wells, you go to Genesis 26, you find Isaac dug a well. The Philistines were envious of him. What happened? They blocked the wells. He went to Gerar and he pitched his tent there. And again, he dug wells. And they, you understand? But Isaac did not give up. He was persistent. He was persistent. And that is the word that I want to share with you this morning, is that you have got to be persistent in the pursuance of your God-given, God-ordained destiny. God has ordained a destiny for you. It has been preordained. There's nothing that the devil can do to stop you or keep you out of it. You have a glorious destiny. God says in his word, I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, come on, talk to me. To give you a future and a hope. You have a hope, you have a living hope, you have an expected end. Expect good in the end. Amen. Yes, there may be this chapter or season that you are in in your life. You may not like it, but understand, nothing happens to you except it be ordained by God. God is the author and the finisher of your life. God is still busy with your life. There are things that you haven't even dreamed of yet that God has already planned for you. There, come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. It's enough about crying about yesterday, about last week, about yesteryear. It's enough about crying about that. God says today, stand up, recover, get up. Hallelujah. 
Forget about what happened last year. This is a new year. Hallelujah. You can't do what you were doing last year. That caused you to sit down all the time. Listen, if this guy sat down, he would never ever have made it in the history books. Hallelujah. The righteous may fall seven times, but he'll get up. He'll still get up. One of the greatest mountains that anyone can conquer in his or her life is the mountain of fear. One of the greatest mountains that you can conquer is the mountain of fear. Most of the defeats that we find in life, most of the things that have defeated people in life, find its root and its cause in the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. So, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So how does fear come about? Fear comes by hearing that which God has not said. You got that? It comes by hearing that which God has not said. God did not say it. Many times we base our lives on what the media tells us, on what the world tells us, on what the experts tell us, on what the scientists tell us. But I'm here to tell you this morning, there's somebody who's greater than all the scientists in the world put together. You make them look foolish. His name is Jesus. He's the position of positions. He's the judge of judges. He's the Lord of Lords. Talk to me, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, most destinies, understand, you have a destiny. And destiny is linked to the word destination. So, your, your life is a journey. You are on a journey to a glorious destination. And that's your destiny. You're heading to your destiny. But you find that many destinies were grounded because of fear. Fear crippled people. Fear paralyzed people. Because you cannot reach the pinnacle of success without overcoming fear. You've got to overcome fear. <coughs> Proverbs 29 verse 25. Let us go there. Proverbs 29 25. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 29 25. The King James says, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. See that? The Passion Translation says this. It says, fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. So you cannot afford to be afraid. And you cannot afford to be intimidated. Oh, Jesus. You must understand, listen, the enemy, Satan, his bark is louder than his bite. He cannot bite because he has no teeth. He's toothless. Come on, listen. Imagine, you know, you go to a house, there's a sign on the door on the gate. You know that sign. Beware of the dog. Basot for the point. Zura thing is capel. Zinja. And you see that sign. And because of the sign, you know that there's a dog there. Yeah. And that dog comes to bark at you. And it barks loud. So you don't go near the gate. You stand far off. But just think of this. If that dog were to open its mouth and, it only, and you only saw guns, <laughs> tell me you still stand outside. <laughs> tell me you still stand outside. You must be really, you know, something, there must be something wrong with you. If you see this, cannot bite you. 
So I'm trying to say that's what Satan does. He breeds threats. If we look at it throughout history, in the early church, in the book of Acts, the enemy was breathing threats upon the early church. But as much as he breathed threats upon the church, the church refused to come under the power of his threats because they understood they had a greater power that was on the inside of them. That was the power that they received on the day of Pentecost. And they were persistent. So that's what I want to get across to you this morning is that no matter what news may come your way, no matter what report you may receive, do not come under the authority of its power. But you take authority over it. The Bible says you trample on serpents and scorpions. Amen. All the lies of the enemy, you trample it underfoot. Because you are the head and not the tail. Come and talk to me, somebody. He says, fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. Do not be afraid and do not be intimidated. God may give you an idea to go and do something. And you say, but Lord, who am I? I'm just so small. But there are so many others bigger than me. There's so many others who are more well equipped than me, more experienced than me. They've been in that business a long time. They have the expertise. They have the skills, Lord. Lord, they've got all this. But who am I? I'm just so small. They've been around the block for so long. Ever heard of a new kid on the block? Ever heard of a new broom sweeps kid? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how many years they may have been in the business doesn't matter how long they may have been in it. Doesn't matter how big they might be. But I'm here to tell you that the God that gave you the idea, the God that gave you the dream within you makes you be to talk to me, somebody. God showed you what God is going to bring you to it. God doesn't show you something if he's not going to bring you to it. God doesn't show you something if he's not going to give it to you. In fact, he's already done it. All he just asks is that you just have faith and you just trust him. Hallelujah. So you cannot be afraid. Or oh, what are the people going to say? So what? How oh, God is not a respecter of persons. Are you worried about what people say or are you worried about what God says? He says, do not, this is fear and intimidation. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Even when they tell you, ah, oh, there's so many have tried, but you know, they've never made it. You say, there's so many. I'm born again. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. I'm full with the Spirit of the living God. Talk to me, somebody. My blood washed, Holy Ghost, full tongue, talking child of the living God. I will speak my way to success. I will speak my way to the top. I'm not going to give room for your word. Talk to me. There's only one word that I hear, and that's the word of God. Because he says, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. I understand that I have a good shepherd, and I understand. I hear his voice. Anything that brings fear, it's not God speaking. Amen. Anything that brings fear or intimidation to your life is not God speaking. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. It says fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. But when you place your confidence in the Lord, you'll be seated in the high place. Amen. See, you'll be seated in the high place. Hallelujah. So we have to realize, brothers and sisters, that on the road to Canaan, there are giants. You with me? There's always a giant that stands before a man and his throne. Oh, Jesus. Somebody. The Bible says, Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. You must understand that in Canaan, there are giants. Are you facing giants this morning? Who's facing giants? Come on, talk to me, somebody. If you're facing a giant this morning, that means that you are in Canaan. Because what was the report they brought to Moses? They say, hey, that land is a land that eats its people. There are people that are mighty.
right here than I. And the descendants of Anak are there. The descendants of giants are there. That is Canaan. That is Canaan. But you cannot believe that report that they are bigger than you. The God that's in you is bigger than all the giants in that land. So whatever giant you are facing this morning, understand there's always a giant between a man and his throne. There was a Goliath between David and the throne. There's a Goliath between you and your throne. Talk to me, somebody. My question to you is this morning, what are you going to do knowing that there's a giant before you and your throne? Are you going to run from your giant or are you going to be like David? Are you going to run towards it in Jesus' name? Hallelujah! David didn't run from Goliath. He ran to him. And he ran in the name of the Lord. You've got to run in the name of the Lord. The God who showed you is the God who's with you. He said, I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Failure is not an event. Failure is not an event. Failure is actually your reaction to an event. That's what failure is. It's not an event. The fact that you may have tried it and it didn't work doesn't mean you didn't fail. You know when you fail is when you refuse to get up because of what happened before. That is failure. It's your reaction to an event. It's your reaction to what happened. So you've got to get back into the ring. You've got to tell the enemy, you thought you had me yesterday. You thought you had me last week. You thought you had me last month. You thought you had me last year. But you know what? I'm back and I'm bad. Talk to me, somebody. I am coming back. I'm making a comeback. You can't make a comeback in your life. Don't let past experiences and past disappointments keep you back from where God is leading you to. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. You must remember that the God that is in you is greater than any giant you can face. And everybody at one time or another will encounter failure. You will encounter it. But how you respond makes all the difference. Jacob Hallelujah. Isaac, brother. Isaac. Isaac could have saw that the first well he dug had been closed up, shut up by the enemy. And he could have said, oh, enough is enough. But he didn't. He got up again and he tried. Blind Bartimaeus. When the first person told Bartimaeus to keep quiet, he could have listened to that person and kept quiet and allowed his miracle and his moment to pass him by. But Bartimaeus did not let that deter him. In fact, when one person said, keep quiet, he shouted a bit louder. Another per person, then it was two of them. He shouted louder than the two. Then all of a sudden, the entire crowd was shouting at him to keep quiet. But Bartimaeus didn't give in. Bartimaeus shouted at the top of his voice. It was a cry of faith. That is blind faith. Blind faith takes no thought of the obstacles. It only sees the prize. It only sees the end. And that is what Bartimaeus saw. Bartimaeus saw himself healed. He saw himself restored. That's why it doesn't matter what the enemy was shouting at him. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. You must understand, we serve a God who responds to faith. He's a faith responsive God. Without faith, you cannot please God. Let me tell you, your tears will never move God. Your crying will never move God. What moves God is faith. Because when you have faith, you say, in spite of what happened, in spite of circumstances, there's a God who I serve, who is with me, who will never leave me, who will never forsake me, and he is with me to the end. I'm putting my trust in God. 
Get to the place where you say, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will face failure at some time, but the important thing is not to, not to fail and fall out, but rather to get up and keep on trying. Get up and keep on trying. Hallelujah. We keep on trying. With God's help, brothers and sisters, you can always get up and reach your ordained goal. With God's help, God will help you. doesn't matter where you fell. God will pick you up. God will help you and you will get there. It is the determination. It is determination that leads to success. You must be determined. That woman with the issue of blood, she was determined to get her miracle. She was determined to get her healing. My question to you is, how determined are you to get to where God is leading you to? Are you listening to everybody else? Are you trusting God? Are you praying about it? Are you, come on, talk to me, somebody, pressing into God, reading the word of God, and keep on speaking the word of God? Hallelujah. You must have faith in God. You must have faith in God because it is only through faith in God that we can overcome fear. Faith in God causes you to overcome fear. You see, David understood that the God was his strength and he had faith in God. And you've got to keep on. You see, every time the enemy makes a suggestion, he comes to you with suggestions. Look at how he came to Eve. Did God really say? He asked you, did God really say? Many times it gets you thinking that God doesn't want you healed, that God doesn't want you well. It is his will. It, come on. The word of God tells us, by his stripes we were healed. That God doesn't want you to have peace in your life. The Bible says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He became our peace. Christ has become our peace. Hallelujah. So you've got to keep on hearing the word of God. And through the consciousness of God's presence in our lives. And that only comes through walking in fellowship with God. Walking in fellowship with God. Sometimes maybe you're walking somewhere and you're all alone. Praise God for this new technology called the earphones and uh, what, what they call them, the earpods. Praise God for that. Because when you're alone walking, you could be walking in the supermarket or in the mall or wherever, and you could be talking to God. People will not think you're crazy. They'll think, okay, no, this one's on the phone call. Praise God, I'm on a very important call. Maybe sometimes when you dream that and someone, you know, maybe, you know, disturbs you, you say, sorry, I'm just on a very important call right now. Talking to God. You could be praying and your cell phone rings. What happens when your cell phone rings? Many people go and they're going to answer the phone. So while they're praying, they say, Lord, let me press pause to be continued and you go check who's on the phone. No, leave that. Finish up with God first. So sometimes you don't know that what you will, that your time of God, you pray, when the cell phone rings, it's the enemy robbing you of the answer that God is about to give you. So you are not all about the phone. So you neglect that time. And you're going to answer the phone. And sometimes maybe it's bad news, it's a bad report. Now you forget that you were praying. The enemy's already stolen from you. So as Sister Alicia read this morning, when you are a soldier, you don't involve yourself in civilian affairs. <laughs> you are mindful of the business of the day. And the business of the day is his business. Hallelujah. It is only through seeking God that we can be delivered from fear. Amen. Only through seeking God that we will be delivered from fear. And the more you know God, 
the bolder you become. The more you know God, the bolder you become. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues. Imagine somebody running, and you know this person, they're running. Man, they're running, you can see the adrenaline has kicked in, and this person is spooling down. They're running at such a speed. It's like lightning that's just passing. And you say, how are you? I'm okay, I'm running. Why are you running? No, there's something chasing me. And you go and you there's no one. Why? Because it's all in the mind. Because the mind is full of fear. So you run from fear. You see that? So you're running from things that don't even exist. But there's a God who exists. And when you know that there's a God who exists, is the self-existing one. Doesn't need any human help to prove that he exists. He exists on his own. He always has been. He always will be. God. When you know that he exists, no fear will move you. So the more you know God, the bolder you become. Amen? And in the times the fear tries to attack your heart, you must learn to trust God through His Word. See, just over a year ago, the whole world was in, man, was in chaos. People were afraid to even just go out of their homes. People were afraid to just go into a supermarket. I mean, think back. Think back. People were afraid. They were so afraid. But you know what? When you hear news like that, you open your words. Open the word of God. And you keep on speaking what God is saying. Come and talk to me, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. You know, people probably say, yeah, you know, the cost of living has gone so high. Ever heard that? Yeah. Ooh, the petrol is going up. Ooh, and then you also say, ooh, what am I going to do? Maybe you were also there on Wednesday night by the petrol station. And then on Thursday, maybe there was nothing, and you got there on Thursday, and you saw the price per litre, and you just started crying. You look and you cry, and you say, I'm okay. I'm okay. No. When you hear that, you must understand. You, you are living in the economy of God. Amen. In the economy of God, you are growing faster than inflation. Amen. Understand that God could cause a few loaves and fish to multiply. God will multiply what you have. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You, listen, that must be a confession. Maybe you should just start speaking and say, you know what? Petrol may have gone up, but my God is my provider. And God has put fuel in my tank. And yes, I may be paying a little bit more now, but praise God, the petrol I have now will even go further than it, than it did at the previous price. Amen. You see, you've got to have a kingdom mentality. It's a mind over matter thing. Get your mind over this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Psalms 56 verses 3 to 4 says this. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And as whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Amen. God is your strength. His word is your strength. His word is your hope. Three things I want to leave you with concerning the strength of God. Is number one, the study of the word of God injects faith into your heart. And faith is the ultimate answer to anything that you're facing. The word of God injects faith into you. Hallelujah. 
The word of God injects strength into you. It's like to put it this way. When you inject the word of God into your heart, you're injecting faith. You are actually injecting an antivirus software into your heart. That whatever the enemy may bring up against you, you have overcome it. Because when you go buy a computer, you get the software, you get all of that. But you've got to protect it. So what do you do? You buy an antivirus program. And you download it onto the computer. So that if ever a virus wants to try and get into the information or the data that's on the computer, that antivirus will recognize there's something that's trying to come in that doesn't belong here, and then the antivirus will cancel it, will block it out, will keep it out. Amen. That's the word of God in your heart, because your heart will recognize that this is not of God. I know the word of God. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Secondly, when your heart is filled with faith, there will be no room for fear. When your heart is full with faith, there will be no room for fear. Because it's only then that you can say, The Lord is my helper. I shall not be afraid what man can do to me. Remember that was David. David was not afraid of Goliath. Although Goliath was bigger than him. Although Goliath breathed threats against him. He understood that in God, is bigger than Goliath. Hallelujah. Lastly, for you to enjoy victory in the kingdom of God, you have to develop a kingdom mentality. You must have a kingdom mentality. There are certain things that just do not happen in the kingdom of God and it's revealed in the word of God. You are in the kingdom of God. He has translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. You are of the light. You are of the day. You are not a child of darkness. You are a child of light. So your light should shine. Amen. That even if darkness were to try and come your way, you shine even brighter. Amen. Because when you fully, when you are truly full of God, then you'll be truly free from fear. Amen. Ever notice a child? A child will pick up a scorpion, pick up a snake, pick up a lizard. I remember one of my nieces one day. My aunt's home had a beehive. And she was only about four years old. And she had a handful of bees. A handful of bees. And she came to her mother. Her mother was fast asleep on the bed. And she wakes her mom up. Mommy, mommy, see, look what I have. <laughs> I mean, the mother didn't wake up for any alarm clock, but when she heard the buzzing and she saw what was in the child's head, she was up, she was out of the room already. And from that day, the child never ever went back to the beehive because of the mother's response. And she asked the mother why, and the mother began explaining. So what happened now? This child became afraid of something she once just to put her hand. See that? Come on, somebody. Sometimes you may see a child um, carrying a frog. Maybe you don't like frogs or you can't stand frogs. And the child says, Mom, look. You see, don't overreact, don't panic. Because you must understand. <laughs> Even if your child is sick as a parent, if your child is sick, especially if your child is young, you become like that woman who came to Jesus whose daughter was sick. She said, Master, please heal my daughter. You understand? And then God, what Jesus says, your faith is made aware. Let it be done to accordance with your faith. 
So you have faith to get your child healed. So you have, that means if you have fear, you'll also have fear to instill into your child. So don't overreact. Wow! And you're out of the house. You do the merit and you never run the comrades. But that day you run the comrades. To say, wow, my angel, that's so nice. Would you please leave God's creature alone? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because if you were to scream and overreact the child, because, because you overreact, the child overreacts. And then sometimes maybe the child gets injured. But you explain, wow, that's so lovely, God's creature, please, my child. Leave God's creature. But where did you find them? Just go leave it there. <laughs> you see, that's a better way. The child will not be afraid. Next time the child sees them, God's creature. But when the child sees it after seeing you do high jump, long jump, somersault, cartwheel, gymnastics, and the congress. That child, every time they see that, they do the same thing you taught them. You taught them how to somersault, how to long jump, high jump. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I trust you with something today. So you overcome fear today. Say, I have overcome. I have overcome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me too. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, look at this. Adam. Adam named all the creatures in the garden. I mean, he went right up to the lion. You are a lion. To the tiger, you are a tiger. I think there was a status I saw somewhere, I think Sister Shama, of people walking with tigers as pets. Like we, you know, we, we walk with a cat, we people walk with, with tigers. That's our brain. It's bold. But I mean, listen, all those animals, those beasts, those creatures were brought to Adam to name. Why are we afraid? Because you see, when they were brought to Adam, there was no such a thing as fear. Because of sin, fear came. When sin was not, when sin didn't exist, sin didn't exist, there was no here. Because it was another realm in which he operated. And praise God by the blood of Jesus. Sin is no more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come and let us stand. Father, we just bless you, praise you, lift up your name. Lord, we just give you thanks. strength now. Thank you that the baby is well. Thank you that they know there are no complications with the pregnancy. Everything is well and intact in Jesus' name. Thank you that you are in control. That you, O oh Lord God, knit that baby together in the womb. It is you who has given life to that baby. So we thank you for that precious life. We thank you for the mother, the father. Thank you that you are with them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those that are sick. We pray for healing. They be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for all the mothers and parents who are so worried about the welfare of their children, wherever they are. We pray that the peace of God will guard their hearts. We pray that you comfort them and strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. We pray for our government and our leaders. We pray that you give them wisdom, O oh God, from you. We pray that you lead them by your spirit, O oh God. 
pray that South Africa will be a God-fearing nation. Whatever ungodly laws have been passed or not gone by parliamentary offices, we nullify them in the name of Jesus. Just like in the days of Esther, O oh God, you reversed the Lord by enforcing another law. Amen. And godly laws will be enforced, O oh Lord, overriding all ungodliness in our nation. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you are in control of our nation, of our country. Oh, we just thank you so much. We pray for the nation, O oh Lord, of the Ukraine and Russia. Pray for unity. Pray for peace. Lord God, whatever spirit of greed, the Lord God captivated the hearts of men that they will understand that they are just men. That they have no authority except the authority that you give. Wherever authority and power is being abused, oh Lord God, at the cost of human life, Lord, it will cease in the name of Jesus. Lord of God, we thank you now, O oh Lord, for your church. Thank you for each and every one that has gathered here this morning. I pray that your grace be with them, that your hand be upon them, that you cause them, Lord, to grow, to increase, and prosper. May this week, O oh Lord, be a phenomenal week. May they walk in the blessing of the Lord, which maketh rich, and you add no sorrow to it. We thank you now, O Lord God, that the spirit of faith has come upon your people. That they, Lord God, will rise up in this hour, rise up in the season. Lord God, that they will recover. They'll recover everything that the enemy tried to steal or rob from them, Lord, but they will recover that. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and we give you praise and glory and honor, O God. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you in advance for all that you are going to do for us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide in each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.